Good morning and welcome to Portal Known Parish Church. Uh, my name is Dennis Christie. I'm the rector here uh, for the group parishes of Ahockel and Portal Known. This is Sunday the 14th of June. Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord be with you. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. We love because he first loved us. Let us pray. God our Father, we are here to worship you and to discover more of your love for us through Jesus Christ. Send the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to serve others as he has served us for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Beneath the Cross of Christ, which has been recorded in St. Commonwealth's Church for us. Very good morning and welcome uh, again formally uh, to our online service today. Uh, just as a few announcements I'd like to run through with you, uh, just to keep you up to speed, we continue to try and keep uh, in close contact or some contact with you all. Um, I hope you've all now received a copy of Pew's News in, in the month. You'll notice that's been going out uh, every month now. Um, uh, 
So I hope you have received a copy of that and also a little guide to prayer which is included in that. I hope those are both helpful. Uh, please just bear in mind if, if uh, to give me a shout, to phone me if you feel there's anyone within the congregation or otherwise that uh, could do with my contact. Uh, it is the case now that, that I can visit uh, within certain restrictions uh, in terms of people's back gardens uh, over a fence at a distance. So those things are, are options now. So please um, encourage, contact me or encourage others to contact me if you think that is appropriate. Also, just thinking about our lockdown easing at the minute, uh, we've obviously heard a number of announcements, not just from the UK government, but also our own assembly, uh, including uh, restrictions being eased uh, on weddings. We have managed ourselves to make use of that this week. Uh, ben and Kiri McClelland got married there, uh, and now uh, that was done under restrictions with, with 10 people allowed uh, outside the church or in the church grounds and some commonels. Uh, so we're already uh, making use of the restrictions that are coming through. We have guidance, uh, as, as I said, from Connor Diocese that come through alongside those announcements that, are, that you hear in the television. Uh, and so it puts the emphasis on us uh, to prepare for what's ahead. Hopefully now uh, churches like ourselves are starting to prepare for opening up. We can't say we can open up yet, but we're trying to put measures in place uh, so that whenever announcements are made in a positive way that we can open uh, in the future in a very safe, in a safe way for all of us. So uh, you'll be keep abreast of, you'll be kept abreast of all those uh, announcements as they come, come through. Also, Sunday school. Sunday school would have or has finished for the year, and normally it wouldn't really start again until September. Uh, but given the fact that our kids are uh, maybe at home and, and are spending a lot more time indoors, we thought it would be a good idea to uh, have a bit of a <coughs> Sunday school over the summer months. So, what, are, what we're going to call now Kids Own uh, Summer Zoom is going to be taking place uh, from Sunday the 21st of June onwards. And that's going to be from 11 a.m. to 11.40, just a 40 minute window. <clears throat> and that's going to be for over eight weeks with a few breaks in between. So it's something that the kids can continue to stay involved and linked into uh, church life uh, through the summer. So we're grateful to Amanda and Elaine for uh, keeping that going. Also Youth Fellowship as well, which really had our last meeting online last Sunday night. Uh, we're probably going to continue it in some shape or form after a wee break uh, uh, in the summer. We're going to try and continue that. We're going to see how things go, whether lockdown eases a bit more, whether we can do something a bit more practical and physically get together again. Uh, but we'll, we'll keep you abreast of that as well, keep you posted. Our Bible study uh, is due to finish the current wee series that we're going through, Discipleship Explored. Uh, so that we'll be finishing that this week and again we're going to have a chat together with that that's went very well uh, we're going to think about what we can do if we want to do anything over the summer again normally that would stop uh, but with the way things are uh, it's good to stay in as much fellowship as we can around God's word so uh, we may want to take that forward uh, over the summer and again we will keep you posted on anything there that's it for the announcements. Uh, I just encourage you all as we slide up there. Uh, just uh, for the sermon that's up ahead in this service, I want you to go and get a wee pen and a piece of paper. So if you can get a wee pen or a pencil and a post-it note, uh, I'd like you to have that at the ready uh, for the sermon, which you will hear shortly. Thank you. Now I come to the point in our service where we remember that we fall short as individuals and uh, we've invited uh, Michael McCulloch this week to lead us in our confessions. Jesus summarized the law as this. The first commandment is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Let us then confess our failures truly to serve God and our neighbour. We say together, Most merciful God. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on each one of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our colleague for today, which is the first Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you, both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This week's reading is taken from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Eulia and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, now we all know that we all have worries in this life. No one really escapes uh, getting by without having anxieties or worries or concerns in life. It's part of uh, what it is to be human. And you'll recognise that wee character on screen, and I'm sure that wee blue man with the red nose and the, the wrinkly forehead, that's uh, Mr. Worry. Uh, he's one of the Mr. Men. Um, so you'll recognise him. And we're going to have a think about that today. We're going to have a think about uh, the idea that we worry and that we have worries in our life. And I'm going to get you all to think about maybe what you're worrying about at the minute, at this moment in time. And I'm going to ask you to do a wee thing now. If you remember earlier on, I asked you to get a bit of paper and a pen. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you all now, in a wee moment, uh, just to write down uh, two worries that are deep in your mind at the moment. Two worries that are, two concerns that you have uh, at the moment. Something that's plaguing you uh, in this current time. Uh, and just use one word to write down uh, to represent each worry and write that in a on a post-it. I can give you a few moments now because you can pause this at any stage as you'll know 
so you can pause it now, take a wee break, just a wee minute, just to think of some worries in your life and write it down on that wee sheet of paper for us. Okay. I know that you can pause me indefinitely. Uh, that's an easy thing to do as well, so I hope that isn't the case. But I hope now that by now you've written down a couple of wee things uh, on that bit of paper uh, that are you would class as worries that you have at the moment. By the way, if one of your worries is your rector, just score that out right now. I hope you're all right. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you this question just quickly. If I told you now that through the power of my mind, my own mind, that I'm going to make both those worries, uh, you might just have one worry. Uh, if you had no worries, I'm just not sure I believe you. Uh, but if I told you now that I can make both those worries disappear completely through the power of my mind. Well, if I said that, then I, you would really need to write my name down on that list. You really need to, to worry about me if I was to come out with tribe uh, like that. Uh, if I were to say I can make your worries disappear, then I would be number three on your list of worries if I'm not already there. But even if I was to say to you now today that God will make those worries disappear. If I had said to you now over this, the airwaves here, that God is now going to make those two worries of yours disappear. Surely that would be okay. I'm a minister, I can say that. And God's God, he can do anything. Our worries are, are nothing to him. Again, if I said that even, then I would say, get me on that list. Start worrying about me if I come out with stuff like that. Because I cannot say that God will make your worries, your concerns disappear. And now you say to yourself, well, what use is this, Dennis? <laughs> what use are you to us this morning or today? Well, see, what I can say to you is what God says he can do uh, from his word about our worries. So we're going to look at what he says in his word uh, about what can be done with our worries. Okay, and that's what we're going to do now. First thing I'm going to do, but first, as I'm going to pray with us all right now, uh, I'm just going to take a moment to pray that, um, you know, as many of you have thought about and expressed real worries in your life, that we don't just throw that out, that we put them before God now uh, in earnest. So let's pray. Lord God, Father in heaven, we thank you again for this opportunity uh, to come together even though we're apart. And Lord, as we have just thought about each of our own lives for a second, and thought about some of the real worries that we have. We pray, Lord God, that you are invited in on those worries. We put them all before you now, all these wee bits of paper, with all these words written down. We pray, Lord God, that uh, you are, are going to help us with them, that you help us through these worries and provide for us and care for us through them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's look at Christian, uh, Scripture then. Let's look at this passage that was read for us by Heather earlier. So we'll look at verse 6. Verse 6 first. So here is what God says about those worries on your sheet. What he says is, uh, well, what he doesn't say is, speak to your rector. Uh, he's going to magic them away. And he doesn't say, Paul doesn't say at least, that he, God, is going to magic them away he's going to get rid of them for you paul says this uh, verse six do not be anxious simply don't be anxious don't worry so those wee worries that you've written down those wee concerns you've written down on your sheet they might not be we at all i know that he says don't worry about it to which i'm sure you are saying to me at least you should be saying great Thanks very much. That's some help. I write down two of my biggest worries in this life. Uh, and at the moment, uh, you say simply don't worry. Right, folks, here is where we are. 
we can just skip over this wee bit of scripture and say, oh, uh, surely he doesn't mean, or it doesn't mean that we don't worry, that, you know, it's, uh, that we should just stop doing this thing. It's unavoidable. We all worry, is it not? Is that not the case? This line of scripture must be rubbish. Move on to the next one, Dennis. There's some stuff in there about being pure and blameless and lovely and admirable. Let's look at that. We can have a go at that. Don't tell me, don't worry. Have you not seen what I've written down here? Do you know my worries? Have you seen my bank account? Do you know what I or someone I love has been diagnosed with? Do you realize what my son or my daughter is going through right now? Don't worry about anything. Be serious. Move on, Dennis. But wait, don't throw your bit of paper away just yet. If we read on in the passage, verse 6, it says, Do not worry about anything but, don't worry about anything but, he says but, in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So he does not just say don't worry, he says don't worry but, Instead, pray, pray, talk to God about your worry. Don't worry, pray. Just left your wee sheet again, that the wee bit of paper that you wrote those two worries down on, and to put it before you now, and ask yourself quickly in a wee second, how much have I worried or prayed about these worries? How much have I put before God these concerns of mine? Maybe you have prayed your head off about them. Maybe some of you haven't even handed this over to God at all. Don't worry, but pray. Don't worry, but pray. And, verse 7 goes on. If you do this one thing with your worry, and what will happen? The peace of God, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Another version puts it this way, the peace of God which surpasses all human thought will stand sentinel over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So in its condensed form, God says, don't worry. Don't sit there worrying and fretting, but instead pray, come to me with your burden, says God, and I will give you peace. You will get it in return for your prayers. Peace, the peace of God. One commentator puts it this way, peace is the fruit of believing prayer. Peace is the fruit. Peace is what you get. That's what God provides, an answer to prayer, peace. The peace of God is a wonderful thing. It passes all understanding. That means you can't understand it, you can't explain it. In other words, you, your worries, your struggles could be so severe that it really no, makes no sense to people around you that you have any peace at all. The world around us can see somebody going through difficult, hard times and they have this peace and you feel it yourself. If the problem that you had disappeared, then you could explain it, couldn't you? As soon as you prayed for it and it disappeared, you could explain that peace all right. You would say, oh, I had this difficulty and then it went away and now I have this peace about the whole thing because it's not there. Somehow you get a peace that's different than that. If you pray for your difficulty to go away and it goes away, then that's an understandable peace you get, isn't it? An explainable one. The problem's not there anymore. That's why I'm at peace. But here's what God does. He gives you a peace that you can't explain. Because in a way you shouldn't have it because the worry, the concern is still there. It's not fixed. 
And here's what it does in that verse. It will guard your heart. It will guard, protect your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I like that version that I included where it will, it will stand sentinel over our hearts and minds. The stand sentinel is like a wee line of soldiers, uh, like protecting a gate or a fortress. They're lined up and they're on guard. The peace of God is something that protects your heart and your mind. So God doesn't magically make the worry disappear. He can do that, obviously. He can do that instantly. What he does in response to your prayer, to our prayer, is to give us peace. Totally unexplainable peace. And maybe some of you have experienced that in your life, and things you've put before God that have been really difficult and they've remained difficult, but you've had this peace. There's something from God that has guarded your heart and your minds in the face of this worry. A worry can really uh, affect us, can't it? it? It can overcome us. A worry sometimes it can, it can cri- cripple us. Our hearts can be overcome. We can get disheartened. It can weigh us down. Our minds can be overcome. It, a worry can really take over our thinking. We can start to think in a wrong way. We can get skewed because of the pressure of a worry that won't go away. The peace of God comes and we are protected by God in our hearts and our minds. It seems, does it not, that this language is more language of taking away, sorry, taking our, is not a language of taking our difficulties away, but sustaining us in our difficulties. Can you see that? God equips us to get through stuff. He doesn't take the stuff away. Is that not the way a good parent brings up a child when you think about it? If I am teaching my child to ride a bike, and if I'm not prepared uh, to place my child in in, in danger, uh, and you know, put them at risk of falling over, cutting their knee. If I'm not prepared to do that, then I'll, I'll still be holding their seat now. I'll still have my right hand in the back of the seat and my left hand on the steering wheel. No, I have to whisper in their ear, you can do this. And I have to let them go. And the first time I let them go, go I know they're going to fall. They're going to fall over. They might cut their knee. They might get a bruise. They might well be tailors. No doubt they'll be tears. But they're back on the bike again and you send them off again and you let them go. And you risk them falling over again, which they do until they get it. When you're the child in that bike, just think about it. You, You think, I can't do this. You think, I'm scared. I'm going to fall off. I'm going to hurt my knee. People are going to laugh at me. You might say to your parent even, take this all away. I can't do it. Maybe cycling is just not for me. Is it a good parent who says, you're right. I'll take it away. You will get hurt if you try to do this. Forget about the cycling stuff. Of course not. Of course not. A good parent allows the worry, allows the problem, allows the difficult hurdle to be there, to remain. Because the parent, of course, knows and sees the wider picture. They know the result of helping someone persevere over just taking the problem away. I was just thinking there, I should have maybe used a, a, a mother or a woman uh, helping that child cycle because it was my mum who, who taught me uh, how to cycle. I was just remembering that this, this week. Like any good parent, we might need to allow our children to be at risk in order for them to grow and to flourish. Don't worry, God says, pray, pray. 
And God will give you peace to get through it. Another important word in there in verse 6, and we're just really, we're homing in on verse uh, verses 6 and 7 in this sermon. There's a lot to this week passage and a lot of things we can dive into. But today, we're homing in on these two verses. In verse 6, it includes that word, everything. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. That's important. It is everything we can take to God. Some people often think that their, their list, their every list of worries, uh, that the things on there aren't important enough. They aren't sizable enough to bother God with. I hear this all the time. Time and again, people say, oh, sure, it could be, it could be far worse off. Things could be worse. People don't tend to, they hold back complaining when they com compare with how other people are getting it worse off. What about those folk in Africa? Statements like that. And we think, well, I can't really burden God with this wee stuff, with this tiny wee worry. He's got riots in America to worry about. He's got protests in London to worry about this weekend. There's a worldwide pandemic. He's not going to be worried about my wee stuff. Well, here's one of my favourite things about God. God cares about anything and everything that you might or I might be worried about or anxious about. If you care about it and you bring it before God, He cares about it. Not only that, He understands perfectly why it's happened, why you're worried about it. He knows all that. <clears throat> now we know this verse too from First Peter, don't we? Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That's what Peter tells us. I remember a Christian saying to someone, <clears throat> They were moving house and they were saying, do you, do you think God really cares about? They were saying that they were moving house and they were worried about it and they were praying about it. And another Christian said, do you think God really cares about you moving house? Has he not got bigger things to worry about? And I was appalled at that to hear that. Of course he does care. If you care about it and you're worried about it and you're anxious about it and you're fretting about it, God is worried about it. He will be too. But it's like you, you know, if you want to be a good father or a good mother or a good grandparent and you're with children, you're interested, aren't you, in whatever the child is interested in. If the wee one is worrying or fretting about something, then you take an interest in that. You find out what it is and you help them, don't you? That's what a good parent, a good grandparent will do. Obviously, if you're worrying about something and praying about something that God doesn't approve of, that goes against his will, his law, then that's a different matter. If you're praying to God for, this, for a bet to come in or for someone else to, to find misfortune because you're not a fan, then God's big enough to handle that. At the end of the day, folks, and I'm going to close, we need to trust God in all this. We need to trust God with that little bit of paper and those two words you've written down there. We need to trust God with those. We need to trust God with our worries. It's not about trusting him after he fixes it. We don't have a problem or an issue and we pray to God about it and then as soon as it's you know, next day it's still there. You think, well, what point was that? No point trusting him. That's not trust. We need to trust God with that wee bit of paper in our hand, knowing fine well that those worries may still be there. Those problems may still continue. William Barclay puts it this way. If we trust God in our worries, we're also remembering 
has love. He loves us. He wants the best for us in the long run. In the bigger picture, which is beyond uh, and outside of any worries or concerns that we have at the moment. He loves us and he wants the best for us in the long run. If we trust God in our worries, we trust God and his wisdom. God knows alone what is best for us. And God has 20-20 vision. He sees in the future and he sees now. He can see both the future and now. We just see now and our problem and our concern. He sees the full picture. He has full wisdom. If we trust God in our worries, then we will remember his power. God is all powerful. He is in full control of everything. Nothing that's happening to us escapes him. Is outside his control. When we trust God with our worries, we trust in his love and his wisdom and his power. We trust him for who he is. And then he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. And that is what really helps us. It helps us through difficult times. It helps us mature and grow as Christians. It helps us grow as trusting disciples of God. Knowing and understanding what Jesus has done for us on the cross. He saved us. But knowing that we're sustained by Jesus as well in this life. Through the Holy Spirit. Now I don't know what you're going to do with your wee note there. You can chuck it or you can keep it. Don't mind. It's up to you. You can bin it. Or you can stick it in your Bible. It doesn't matter what you do with the note in a way. All I encourage you to do is trust God with those two wee words you've put on the paper. Trust God with those. Trust Him and allow God with His perfect love, His perfect wisdom and His perfect power to give you His perfect peace. And rest in him as you walk through your difficulties. I'm going to close out this sermon by just uh, praying the, the final blessing over you. It'll appear on screen and you'll know it from our, from our prayer book. But it's straight from this piece of scripture. It's one of the good things, well, one of the wonderful things about our prayer book. And it's soaked in the Bible and the Bible comes through it. So let me pray now over each one of you and over your weak piece of paper and your big concerns. May the peace of God which passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. We now have our closing hymn, uh, which was recorded in some common else, Be Thou My Vision.
We now have our prayers, which uh, Donna is going to lead us in. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for your mercies that are new every morning. Thank you for the many blessings we receive each day and forgive us for when we take them for granted. If we woke this morning and put our two feet in the floor, then we are blessed. If we have clothes to put on and food in our cupboards, we are blessed. If we have a roof over our heads, we are blessed. If we have a family and friends, then we are blessed. If we have health and strength, we are blessed. If we can worship you freely, we are truly blessed. Lord, in our human feelings, we are so quick to complain about what we have and what we don't have. Stir our hearts with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we can see and know that you supply all our needs, not our wants. Fill us with love and compassion for those whose homes is a doorway on a street. For the many who are going to go hungry today. For all who are sick, for those who are in hospital. Help us not to forget the lonely. May we reach out to those around us and show friendship and love. Lord, I pray for anyone who is suffering with a mental illness, who is feeling in the depths of despair, who have lost all hope. In this lockdown period, those with an already fragile state of mind may have gotten worse and so many more people are now suffering with stress, anxiety and fear. It is my prayer, Lord, that you will sustain them with your peace and strength. The coronavirus sadly has taken so many lives, but unfortunately it hasn't ended there. So many jobs have been lost, businesses shut, more families having to use the food banks. The economy is in a crisis. The future is uncertain. But praise God this morning. If we put our hope and trust in Jesus, if we fix our eyes on him and surrender our worries and burdens, then we will have peace in all things. Jesus has told us not to worry, but pray about everything. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds. As we emerge from one crisis, we seem to be heading into another due to the murder of George Floyd. Lord, we pray for peaceful demonstrations that there will be no violence, vandalism or civil unrest. Open their eyes to see that two wrongs don't make a right. The world is so full of hate, bitterness and unforgiveness. I pray, Lord, that you would raise up an army of Christian brothers and sisters to start a revival to share the gospel and love of Christ. Change people's hearts to see beyond the colour of skin, to know that you fearfully and wonderfully made them. You made us all equal. Help us love each other as you love us. It doesn't matter our status in life, how wealthy we are or what we possess. None of that will fill the deep void in our hearts. The world and all it has to offer gives us only fleeting happiness, but true joy in all circumstances can only be found in Christ. Lord, this world needs you. You are the only one who can heal our nation, bring peace, hope and love to a broken world. Lord, bless all our NHS staff and emergency services. Bless our key workers. We give thanks for them all for their continual selfless and devoted commitment to the work they do in our hospitals, nursing homes, schools, towns and communities. Lord, at this time we pray for the families of Prissy Quinn, Hugh Thompson and Betty Anderson, who all sadly passed away recently. May they know the comfort and strength that only your Holy Spirit can give them at this sad time. And finally, we want to congratulate the new Mr and Mrs Ben and Kerry McClelland, who was married in the church grounds on Thursday. It is evident of the love and commitment they have to each other, but also the love they have for you as their Lord and Saviour. So we commit this young couple into your hands, Lord, and ask that you bless their new life together. Lord, we give you all the glory, honour and praise and ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you again for joining us today. May God bless you and keep you. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.